بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونشكره ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مذل له ومن يذلله فلا هادي له واشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسول وبعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم عمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما صدق الله العظيم We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we glorify him and we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy and his forgiveness we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his protection and his acceptance and we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that those who are sick to grant them shifa those who are in difficulties to grant them ease and especially our brothers and sisters in Palestine, we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them ease, to grant them victory. And we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that all of those who have returned to him among them, to grant them the reward, the reward of the martyrs. And we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that all those who have returned to him from this ummah, to have mercy upon them, to forgive them, and to reunite them with all of us in Jannatul Firdaus. Ameen. My dear gathering, I want to start today by bringing our attention to an incident towards the end of the life of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after delivering what we call the farewell ceremony when all his companions were gathered and he said to them that on Yawmul Qiyamah you will be asked about me what will you say and they all said Qad Balaghta Risala Wa Addayta Al Amanah they say, Ya Rasulullah, you have delivered a message and you have fulfilled the amana. You have fulfilled the amana. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Al Quran, Inna Allah ya'murukum an tu'addul amanati ila ahliha wa iza hakam tum bayna nasan tahkumu bil adu. Allah commands you Allah commands every one of us that we deliver the amana to those whom it is due that we fulfill the amana to those who deserve it and the purpose of my khutbah today is for every one of us including myself to leave this masjid today with one simple word Amana One simple but yet very heavy and weighty word And I want us to leave today to actually feel the weight of that word It is so heavy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us That the mighty skies 
and the vast ark and the gigantic mountains. They all refused this amana. Inna aradna al amana ala samawati wal ard wal jibal fa abayna an yahmilnaha. Allah offered this amana to the heavens and the earth, to the mountains, and they all say, not in arrogance, not in disobedience, but they all said, Oh Allah, wash faqna minha. They say, Oh Allah, this is too heavy for us. We cannot handle this. We may fail, so we don't want to take this on. But insan, mankind, we said, give it to us. We can handle it. We will take it. That is what we said to Allah. So what is this amana that is on our shoulder that we agree to? And none of us here can say, I did not agree to that. We are part of ins, we are part of mankind, and mankind agreed to this. This amana, it means that pact, that agreement we made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will be responsible for our actions. That pact we made with Allah that if we do good, we will be rewarded. And if we do wrong, we will be punished. That pact we made with Allah that if we obey Him, we will enter Jannah. And if we disobey him, we will be punished. That pact we made with Allah, that we will worship him. When Allah says to us in Al-Quran, Alastu bi rabbikum qalu bala shahidna ala anfusina. Mankind, we bear witness on our own selves. And we say to Allah, we will worship you. So this amana, it is that agreement we made to Allah that we will fulfill this deen and we will worship him. So our salah, it's an amana. It's a trust that Allah gives to us that we agree that we will fulfill it. And our fasting, we agree that we will complete it. And our zakah, we agree to it. And if we can afford hajj at least once in our lifetime, that's an amana from Allah. But if we do not fulfill these obligations, it means we have betrayed that amana. It means we have betrayed that amana. Because we agree to it. And that is our amana with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What we call the amana fil ibadah, that we will worship Allah. That's one kind of amana. And then there is amana fil mu'amalat, fil in our dealings. And many of us, we fast and we pray and we make our hajj and we give our zakah. Alhamdulillah. But where we fail, it's in the amana, the trust in dealing with each other. And there are many types or category of this amana. For example, our children is an amana that Allah has given us and said, here, one child, two child, three child. It's an amana, it's a trust. Allah says, here, now fulfill your duty towards that child. And when you fail to educate that child, when you fail to set good example, When you commit haram in front of that child, when you feed that child haram, when you allow salah to go by and you are not setting good standard for that child, then it means you have betrayed that child. Ya amanu anfusakum wa ahlikum narah. says, protect yourself and your family. That's the trust. That's what we took on. That's on our neck. And our wives, our spouses, husband and wives, you are a man for each other. So when the husband fails in his responsibility, when he treats his wife against 
the laws of Islam, when he's not kind to her, when he abuses her, he has betrayed that amana. And similarly, if the wife disobeyed the husband, she has betrayed that amana. And our parents is amana, especially when they attain an age that they need our attention and our care. Allah has put that as an amana for us. And our wealth is an amana that Allah has blessed us with. How will we dispose of this wealth? Will we hoard it? Or will we spend it in the path of Allah? Will we spend it on our family? Will we spend it on our brothers and sisters who deserve it? And our job is an amana. How many times people work and they take on a job and one week they stretch into a month or two months what they have done. They have betrayed that amana of their employer. And the employer has an amana to treat his employees properly. Whether you are being paid for the work you do or you are doing it voluntary because there are many who volunteer. Even if you volunteer, it's an amana because you commit that you will do this job. So do it properly. It's an amana. And if we all live our lives that every one of these aspects, every one of these items, it's an amana. And it's on our neck. Then we will take care of it properly. And our body is an amana. This body that Allah has blessed us with. So do not betray that body. Because when, for example, you smoke, you are betraying that amana, you are destroying your body. And when you take drugs, you are betraying that amana. And when you put haram in that body, you are betraying that amana. Because one of the greatest blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is good health. So if you do not take care of it, and if you waste and you abuse your food, then you are betraying that amana. ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ You will be asked about your food. You will be asked about every little thing on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. So make sure you take care of that amana. And your tongue is an amana. That we do not use our tongue in a way that will harm our brothers and sisters. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, Al-Majalisu Bil Amana. What does that mean? That if your brother says something to you, your sister says something to you, whether they tell you not to say it to anyone, whether they tell you it's a secret or not, by default you have no right to spread their business. You have no right to put it on Facebook. You have no right to go and tell someone else that this brother or this sister, so and so. Unfortunately, in our society, in our community, as soon as we hear something, we love to transport. We love to tell it to someone else. We love to broadcast. Your tongue is an amana. So make sure you take care of it. Even the garbage on the street and things that will harm people on the street. Why does the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say when you remove something harmful from the street, it is sadaqah. If you do not remove it, that's an amana. You see something that can harm someone, it's an amana on you. Remove it. You see garbage in front of the magic, clean it. And the promises we make to each other. That you promise your brother and your sister, it's an amana on your neck that you fulfill it. And then there is financial amana. That we fulfill our financial obligations. That you borrow money from someone. Don't make excuses. Do not prolong. Do not turn a month into a year or two years. Fulfill your amana. Somebody give you something to keep, financial, finance. 
return it. It's an amana. Unfortunately, many of us fail when it comes to our financial amana. But think about how heavy this word is. How heavy that weight is. When on Yawmul Qiyamah, like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told his companion, what will you say about me? And they all said, Qad addayt al amana. You have fulfilled your amana. What will others say about you on Yawmul Qiyamah? What will your spouses say? What will your children and your parents say? What will your brothers and sisters who you dealt financially with? What they will, will they say about you? Will they say that you have fulfilled your amana, amana or not? And my brothers and sisters, one of the most important amana we have, especially these days, in this society, in this country, where Islam is being attacked from all angles, one of the greatest amana on our shoulder, every one of us, male and female, young and old, is the amana to give a good representation of Islam. Because people don't see your salah. That's not your representation of Islam. That's for you. People don't see how much you give. People don't see your fasting. They see your action. They see your behavior. They see what comes from your, come through your lips. That is what they see. So when you deal with people unjustly, unfairly, when you deal with people in an arrogant way, when you abuse people, when you are not kind to people, that is what they see Islam is. So our amana is to make sure we behave properly. Because how many people have accepted Islam because of behaviors, good behaviors of Muslims? And how many of them have run away from Islam because of bad behaviors of Muslims? So keep in mind that one of our greatest amana in this society is to give a good representation of Islam. And that's not the responsibility of the Imam and the Shuyukh and the Khatib. That's the responsibility of every single one of us. And that is what I want us to take away here today. That we have an amana on our shoulder. أقول كولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه غفور الحمد لله الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعد اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. My dear gathering, if I'm to tell you that there is a place where you don't have to work and you don't have to go through this daily grind of going in the morning and coming in the afternoon just to make ends meet just to put food on the table, just to put a roof over your head. If I'm to tell you that that place, you don't have to worry about your food or your sustenance, that there is enough for you, and you can eat whatever you want. If I'm to tell you there is a place where the weather is beautiful, I know I'm not talking about Jannah, but a place where the weather is beautiful. That you don't have to worry about heat. You don't have to worry about cold. It's just beautiful for you. And you enjoy it. You will say that fantasy. That cannot be. That's only in Jannah. But if I'm to tell you. That in Al-Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us. That that place once existed. 
لقد كان لسبا في مسكنهم آية جنتان عن يمين وشمال كلوا من رزق ربكم واشكروا له بلدة طيبة ورب غفور Allah says the people of Saba they once live and this is a reality they have gardens they have enough food that they can eat whatever they want and they have surplus for tomorrow and for next week and for next year they have enough and not only that Allah says and if they want to travel if you want to travel today, if you want to go to London or go to any other country, you get your ticket, you jump on a plane, you go through the fatigue, some places you get your visa, and you go through all that expense. Allah says, These people, وَجَعَلْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ وَبَيْنَ الْقُرَى الَّتِي بَارَقْنَا فِيهَا Allah says he made travel easy for them they want to go to Toronto they just say it and they make a few steps and they are there he made it short for them and then turn to the people of Moses Allah says the people of Musa Allah put a cloud over their head. Wherever they go, there's that cloud over them. No rain, no snow, no heat. Just beautiful weather. And he gave them food from Jannah, manna was salwa. But what happened to these people? The people of Saba, fa'aradu. Allah says, have all of this. Kulume, rizkirab, washkurula. That's an amana. Be grateful. فَأَعْرَدُوا But they disobeyed. And what the people said, they said, Oh Allah, this travel is too easy. Make it hard for us. Buy it by us far enough. They say, Allah, we want to go through the fatigue. We want to go through the pain. And Allah says, What? وَمَا ظَلَمُونَ وَلَكِنْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَمَا ظَلَمْنَاهُ وَلَكِنْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ They are the ones who oppress themselves. What they did? They betrayed this amana. So Allah took it away from them. My dear brothers and sisters, every blessing that Allah has blessed us with, our sight, our ears, our tongue, our hands, our feet, it's an amana from Allah. And think about the day of judgment when our lips will be sealed. Will your eyes say that individual fulfilled the amana or they betrayed by looking at what they should look? Will our ears say that person betrayed the amana by listening to what they shouldn't listen? Will our tongue say and our body say he or she betray me because they put haram in me and because they took drugs. Everything, our limbs will be a witness against us. And that is why Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, la imana, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rarely give a khutbah without saying this to his companions, la imana liman la amana la. There is no iman for someone who has no amana. If you betray your amana, the Prophet says, La imana. And what is one of the quality of the hypocrite? Is that tumina khana, when they are given an amana, they betray it. So if you betray the amana to your spouse, or to your children, or your parents, or your wealth, or your body, or you betray that amana to Allah. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, you have the quality of a munafiq. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warned us, إِذَا دُيَّتْ دُيَّعَتِ الْأَمَانَةِ فَانْتَذِرُوا أَسْسَعَةِ 
One of the signs of Yawmul Qiyamah is when Amana becomes scarce. When there are only a few people that you can trust. Only a few people you can do business with. Only a few people you can say that person is trustworthy. When that happens, Fantadiru was So my dear gathering, I want to advise myself and you. When we leave the door of this masjid today, make sure you feel the weight of this amana that's on your shoulder. We should feel it because it is not light. We should not take it lightly. And if we have betrayed our man in the past, all is not lost. Go now and start to repair that. Start to fulfill your amana. Because what is it you will want to be known by? What is that one quality you would like to be known by in this life and you want Allah to call you by in the next? You want to be called Al-Amin. You want to be an Amin. One who is trustworthy. One who fulfills his obligation to Allah and to mankind. And that is why Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what was his greatest quality even before becoming a messenger? Al-Amin. Musa alayhi salam, he was described by two young women who he did favors to, who he helped. And they went to their father and how did they describe him? Al-Qawiyul Amin. They said, that man is strong, but most importantly, he is Amin, he's trustworthy. That we are two young girls, but he was humble and modest and lower his, great, his gaze. He did not betray his trust. And the most mighty angel of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called that angel, Ar-Ruhul Amin. That is how Allah described that angel. It is Amin. So that one quality we would like, that people should know us by in this life. You want people to say you are, a, you are an Amin, a person who is trustworthy, who fulfill the amana. And if Allah knows us by that quality, then that is what we work and we strive for, we beg for. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Al-Quran, when he described the believers, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ mu'minun, And when he described all the great qualities of the believers that will inherit al firdaus Allah says, among the qualities of these people, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِأَمَانَاتِهِمْ وَعَهْدِهِمْ رَعُونَ They are people who are very serious about taking care of their amanat, their responsibility. I beg among Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all that ability to fulfill our amanat, our amana to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our amana to fellow human beings. I beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for our mistakes or our shortcomings and to help us that we will never, we will never betray our amana and that we will be among those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept on Yawmul Qiyamah, those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow to enter Jannah because we have fulfilled our amanat. Ibad Allah, ittaqullah, inna Allah ya'maru bil adl wal ihsan wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yanha'ni al-fahshai wal-munkari wal-bakh ya'idhukum la'allakum tadhakkarun yaqim as-salam.